In a recent video, I upset the analog purists by divulging an industry secret about record cutting, the fact that since the 80s, the vast majority of records cut went through at least one set of digital converters. The title of that video was Vinyl is Digital Anyway, but vinyl is just a chunk of plastic with grooves cut into it, there's nothing digital about that at all. That's a clip of a computer booting into the free DOS operating system from a vinyl. That's pure digital computer data. But reel to reel tape is analog though. No ones and zeros there. Just good old fashioned seller tape and rust. Most of my career, Sony 3348, digital tape machine, 48 tracks on one tape, 48K, 16 bit. That was my sound for thousands, if not 15,000 songs. It was a major part of my sound for most of my career, it was the 3348. Anyone who's confused by this, this probably doesn't understand what analog actually means. And that's okay, because by the end of this video, you're gonna be an expert. Well, what does analog mean then? Well, let's start off with what people typically think analog means. Analog is the real sound, which is smooth and continuous, whereas the digital is some kind of numeric computer representation of the analog sound. And because it has a sample rate, you get one number per sample, which results in this horrible jagged stair step waveform. So obviously the real analog smooth one is better. And if you agree with this popular definition, you're wrong. So you should continue watching to find out what the actual truth is. The word analog comes directly from the Greek word analogos, and it means something that is similar or comparable to something else, either in general or in some specific detail, something that is analogous to something else. Analog systems can be created to model pretty much anything you want using pretty much any technology you want. Lord Kelvin's tired predicting machine from 1872 was an all analog model of tidal heights and used pulleys and gears and cranks as the medium through which that information was stored. The Phillips machine used fluid to model entire economies. And it doesn't just apply to something pretend modeling something in the real world. We can flip that round as is the case when scientists use soap films to help solve for mathematical equations. But we're not mathematicians, we don't care about formulas and soap bubbles, we care about audio. So how does that apply to music? Well, most people know that you can store music in a bunch of different formats, but what our ears hear are sound waves and not magnets or light or some other thing. We need to start with sound waves to actually hear the thing in the first place in the room and we can record that, but at the other end of that process, we need to get a pair of speakers to transform it back into sound waves so we can actually hear that with our ears. It's the bit in the middle that we're concerned with with the analog recording technologies. So let's have a look at a couple of historic formats now. Most people understand that analog tape works on a magnetic principle. Your microphone converts the sound waves into a voltage and that voltage is used to magnetize the tape in an analogous way. But before tape was the standard, wire was actually used as the storage medium. Just a thin metal wire wrapped around a spool. Everyone knows that records store the information in a groove, but less people know about optical analog recording. And in fact, optical was used as the industry standard way to deliver audio for film since the 1920s and definitely in the 1930s, all the way up until it was superseded by digital technology much more recently. In the recording process, the original sound waves are converted to varying electrical current. The varying electrical current is converted to variations in a light beam. This varying light causes variation in the exposure of the film. So let's summarize. When we hear a sound in real life, we can use a microphone to capture that and convert those sound waves into an analog electronic voltage. That information can then be stored in some way, whether that's magnetic or light or mechanical or whatever way you want, you can store that information. But then if we wanna to listen to it back, we have to convert it back to a voltage, which we can amplify and send to a set of speakers and the drivers vibrate and produce sound waves just like we started with sound waves and we end with sound waves and so now we can actually hear it because the human ear can't hear magnets or light or whatever else. But that's the analog recording process. Now, what does the digital recording process look like? Well, sound waves are transduced with the microphone into a voltage and then we store that voltage somehow and then we reproduce a voltage and then we send that to an amplifier and to speakers, it produces sound waves and then we hear the sound again. Well, it seems the two processes look awfully similar. Everything before and after the mystery storage implementation is identical. 
The only difference is the method in which we decide to store the information. So what is the distinction between an analog and a digital recording? Well, most people are going to say that the difference is that digital is discrete and analog is continuous. Or put into other words, digital has a sample rate with a defined granularity of the data, whereas analog doesn't have a sample rate, it's continuous, so it has an infinite temporal resolution. Spoiler alert. Bullshit. Not only is digital not stair-stepped, but analog formats also don't have infinite resolution. Anyone who knows anything about physics knows that sooner or later you start bumping into molecules and atoms and there's space between these things. Nothing is perfectly continuous in the entire universe. According to this manufacturer of analog tape, quarter inch at 15 ips has 65 million magnetic particles per second. But of course, quarter inch is stereo, so we can easily half that. And it's going to be much less than half because, of course, it's not going to be the entire surface. There's going to be some space in there as well. But let's just call it 30 million per second. So a record player's stylus bumps into around a trillion molecules per second of vinyl. That's a big number. Let's happily call vinyl continuous and therefore analog. An optical soundtrack sees about a billion film grain particles a second. Okay, cool. So that's safe. Optical soundtracks are continuous. They're analog too. Nice. And we already discussed a quarter inch is about 30 million. In contrast, the sample rate of the flat codec tops out at about one megahertz. So let's set our threshold higher than flat, but lower than analog tape. Let's say 10 million particles per second. That's one order of magnitude above flat. Okay, so everything below 10 million per second is discrete and therefore digital, and everything above 10 million is continuous and therefore analog. So now, where's cassette tape? Well, a cassette is about half the width of quarter inch, and it runs way slower, and it's got twice the tracks because it's got a stereo pair on each side. So once we account for that, a cassette tape would only have around 4 million particles per second. So going off our threshold definition, cassette tapes are digital, are they? <laughs> But wait, flax 1 megahertz sample rate isn't even that impressive. You can go much higher than that. You can even just buy music in the DST1024 format, which is a sample rate of 45 megahertz. Let's call that 45 million particles per second equivalent. So this is more continuous than quarter inch analog tape. So either DSD is analog or quarter inch is not. So if we use this continuous discrete distinction to deem what is analog and what is digital, we very quickly start to see a complete breakdown of the definitions. But that's just one aspect of stupidity. The second aspect is the fact that all digital audio systems, which aren't just broken, have low pass filters. So all voltages coming out of a DAC are perfectly continuous anyway without any stair steps. The stair step thing is a complete myth propagated by people who don't understand what a low pass filter is. We can get the most stair-stepped wave in the world, a square wave, and then just put a low-pass filter on it, and we can see that it's no longer stair-stepped at all. And when that's performed electronically, the most nasty digital square wave becomes a perfectly continuous sine wave. Once we actually understand the technologies themselves, we very quickly start to realize that all of this terminology is just marketing driven. It's just trying to get gullible consumers to buy more products. All of those analog purist type people have completely fallen for the marketing hype and they believe in the magic of the all analog chain and they think that any digital thing in that process is contamination, it's pollution, it's going to defile the pristine, pure analog nature of the recording. And once it's hit an analog to digital converter or digital to analog converter, it's now impure and you can just chuck it away and the quality of the music has been lost. Only a completely 100% analog pathway will do. And it's hilarious when you have cases where people are saying, oh, this pressing sounds so amazing, sounds so much better than the CD. And then the company gets found out and they get sued and stuff like this. And before everyone thought it sounds so great. And then afterwards, oh, no, they didn't sound good in the first place. No, they, they were terrible. It's just marketing hype. People just don't understand the actual technologies and what's happening at the core, at the foundational level. And once you start to understand that, you understand that digital is pretty much superior in every single way, frequency response, dynamics, distortion, to all of these old school analog formats. Does that mean they're better? No, not necessarily. Because if transparency is your goal, yes, digital is better. Modern, high quality digital is obviously better, it's more transparent. 
But if you want the experience of sitting there and listening to a cool vinyl and you've got the big artwork and it's cool to collect and you want to go to a show and buy the vinyl from the band directly at a local small show or something like that, that's all really cool and I love those things myself. So is digital better than that? Of course not. We want that because that is a really cool aspect of enjoying music and living our lives and enjoying our lives. We don't just have to go with what is most clean and transparent and pure, but just in terms of sound quality and this concept that digital contaminates and pollutes and is impure or something like that and it has to be the analog pathway otherwise it's just it, you could just chuck it in the bin it's it's complete complete marketing hype so all of you analog purist types who think oh it's touched a digital converter it's impure now you can chuck it in the bin it's contaminated it doesn't sound good anymore you just completely have been fooled suckered in to the marketing hype not only is modern high quality digital technology so transparent you can't hear the difference anyway, but modern high quality digital technology can be more continuous, more analog in terms of the theoretical definitions than some of the cherished traditional analog recording mediums like analog tape. 